Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our professional development webinar series. Uh, we are trying to provide parishes and dioceses with the formation, the training, the tools that you need to create vibrant Catholic parishes and growing ministries. And today we're talking and focusing specifically on how to grow youth ministry. So our webinar is going to be titled 10 Ways to Get the Most Out of NCYC Before, After, and During the Event. And we're joined by a panel of youth ministry experts, including Bob McCarty, Kevin Fan, Cindy Case, Kim McMillan, and Jackie Francois Angel. So thanks everybody, all the panelists, for being with us. We're going to have each one of them will be talking a about a different section, offering some advice on how you can prepare for NCYC and, and how you can kind of unpack it afterwards. Um, but at any time during the presentation, feel free to offer questions, and we'll offer we'll get to those questions at the end. Um, if you're here for the first time, I'm Jerry Dees. I'm the digital marketing manager and organizing uh, this webinar series here at Ave Maria Press. This Webinar series is brought to you as a, in a partnership with a number of national organizations, including the National Conference for Catechetic Leadership, the National Association for Lay Ministry, and the National Federation of Priests Councils. This webinar is, is brought to you also um, and it, with a special partnership with the NFCYM, the National Federation for Catholic Youth Ministry, and the National Association for Catholic Youth Ministry Leaders. So once again, we, we will be answering lots of questions at the end, so, and you can find the question section in the GoToWebinar panel and see it on display. Um, on your screen here, and a lot of you have already jumped in there, so find that again if you want to jump in with questions at any time during the presentation. Now, we have a lot to talk about, and I want to introduce quickly each one of the, the panelists that are here before we begin. Um, they may not be in the order that you can see them, but you can feel free to, to shrink or um, enlarge the video side versus the, um, the slides to, to if you're watching the live presentation to follow along with, with each one of their presentation parts. So I'll start with Bob. Bob McCarty is the executive director of NFCYM, who is the host of NCYC in Indianapolis. And one of Bob's favorite things about NCYC is his belief that it is the most hopeful gathering in the church today. So if you want to feel good about being Catholic, Bob told me, go to NCYC and experience the spirited and spirit-filled young church. So Bob, thanks so much for being here. You're welcome. Good to be here. And Kevin Fan will be here. He is here as the, the Director of Adolescent Faith Formation for the Archdiocese of Dubuque. And he is bringing a record 1,600 people. Is that right, Kevin? 1,627. 1,627 to NCYC next week. Um, and he's from, just from his own diocese. Kevin's a favorite thing about NCYC, NCYC is the way that adults are affected by seeing a faith that has lived in the teens. The teens really evangelize the chaperones and the adults while in Indianapolis. So thanks, Kevin. You're welcome. Cindy Case is the director of, of the Office of Youth and Young Adult Ministry in the Diocese of Youngstown. Her favorite thing about NCYC is seeing the excitement in the teens' eyes the first time that they are inspired. Is that right? Cindy, think, something like that. Cindy, Cindy thanks for being Thank here. You. Kim McMillan is the director of youth ministry at St. Benedict Parish in Chicago, Illinois, and our representative from NACYML. Her favorite thing about NCYC is seeing so many young people sharing a joy-filled experience of faith and being witnesses in their home parishes. She loves to see the way their experience ripples and affects the entire parish. So, Kim, thanks again for being here. Thank you. And ja Jackie Francois and Angel is the MC for NCYC this year, and she'll be. She's also a well-regarded keynote speaker for youth throughout the country. And her favorite thing about NCYC is meeting all the teens. And it's, she told me it's a little bit of a reunion seeing all the people. And for Jackie, this is like a, a family reunion. So Jackie, thanks so much for bring, bringing uh, or sharing your time uh, with us today. Thank you. It's good to be here. Okay. Well, what we're going to do, like I said before, is we're going to go through these 10 ways, suggestions on how to get ready or how to prepare for NCYC before, after, and during the event. Feel free to ask questions as we go along, but we're going to build in some Q&A time at the end, so feel free to, to um, save that question until the end if you'd like. So we're going to start with before NCYC. How do you get ready? How do you prepare? We'll begin with Kim on preparing the youth. Okay, so you got a week, so you got to get moving. <laughs> if you're waiting till now to begin pre preparation, you're in trouble. But hopefully you had... Um, a chance to meet with your young people and just kind of lay out the expectations and the experience of what NCYC is going to be about. Um, I think it's really important to make them aware that it's not just a family vacation or a trip to another state, that it really is a pilgrimage of faith and that the idea of going there is to encounter other people of faith and to share your faith with the, the rest of your peers because they're meeting their friends 
from other places and they're meeting up with people who are also having the same struggles in their faith and practicing their faith as they are. And, and I think for them, for the young people, it becomes an experience of recognizing that they're not alone. So I think first and foremost the important part is to tell them about this as a pilgrimage, as a, as a, um, a journey of faith, as a journey to grow in faith. And then um, I think it's really important for us to make sure that we're clear about the expectations when they get there and we're clear about um, what we hope for them when we're, when we're at Indianapolis, when we're at NCYC. I think um, the idea that they're going to encounter others and the concept of trading is a way for us to have conversations with other people, but it's not the, necessarily the act of trading that's the goal. It is the encounter and the conversations that you share with each other. Um, I think it's really important that we maybe, maybe uh, temper their uh, adolescent desire to meet people by sharing phone numbers and hugs in the hallway a little bit with the idea that um, it really is about sharing our faith journey and not trying to find as many connections uh, phone number wise as you can get. Um, I think it's important for us to make sure that we sit with them and, and plan who they're going to hear and what they're interested in. Um, look at the titles of the workshops and the presenters and see what resonates or connects for them. I think there's a lot of things that we need to do as youth ministers and youth ministry professionals to get them in the mindset of what they're going to experience. Um, sharing um, past experience yourself I think is important because it helps them know what to anticipate and then hopefully um, kind of gives them a, a foot in the door and to where to plug into things. Um, Clear expectations, planning, pilgrimage, those are all really important ways to enter into preparing the young people. Good. Thanks, Kim. I appreciate it. If, you, if anyone has any questions about preparing the youth or at any time during the presentation, feel free to ask them. And we'll throw them at Kim and the others as we go through. So number two, preparing parents. Kevin? Yeah, a lot of a lot of the same things are going to apply. I think with preparing parents too, as far as setting the expectations for what the experience is going to be. Uh, I think one of the important things to do with with thinking about parents is that these are their children going off to an experience. So the more we can communicate with parents about um, a few basic things. First, showing our support that that we really view ourselves as partnering with them and, and that they're entrusting their teens to us for for a period of time. So letting them know that we take that partnership seriously is important. Uh, letting them know how we're going to keep their sons and daughters safe. I think that they communicate with the parents uh, that this is not just uh, something we're doing without preparing or due diligence. We're going to actually do our best to keep them safe. Um, letting them know what about NCYC will engage their kids, what kind of experiences their kids are going to have so they know what to expect. Um, and I think most important, letting them know that we're going to pray for them and that we applaud their work and bringing their teens to a point where they can uh, be a part of this national conference. So to be appreciative of our parents. Um, I also think it's very important in, in the preparation stages, like, like she said, you had like Kim said, you have a week uh, to get there. And now's a good time to start preparing for your parish to gather and watch the live streaming sessions for those parents who aren't fortunate enough to attend uh, NCYC itself. So uh, an idea might be to ask one parent to be a host or an MC for those gathered experience and have it happen at the parish site. Uh, people can bring in food and beverages. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of beverage because they're not going to be in Indianapolis. It's either adults. They can do that thing. Um, so have them get together and watch the general sessions or the parent mega sessions. Um, pray together, discuss together, and build a faith community so when our kids got back from NCYC, they have a stronger faith community to come home to. Um, the other thing I, I just think it's important to point out that about 30 to 40 percent of the uh, chaperones from the Archdiocese of Dubuque are parents of teenagers who are on the trip. So how do we help parents to understand a unique role they have is let it, while on the experience of letting their kids grow a few wings and kind of grow a little, but at the same time still maintain a strong parental relationship with their children while at the conference? Those are tough questions to wrestle through. Good. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Yep. Cindy, you can talk right. about chaperones, preparing chaperones. Thank you. Um, hi from Youngstown. Well, Kevin has more adults going to NCYC than my entire delegation. I just want to say how proud I am of our smaller diocese that we have almost 200 going and have worked hard to get there. And uh, we have a lot of parents who are also 
going. Um, instead of advice, per se, I just want to share a little bit of what we do here in Youngstown. And partially it comes from an observation I had a few years ago of another diocese where the diocese registered the parish groups but then left them on their own for everything else. And while it seemed to work okay, I could see that adults were exhausted from trying to keep on top of their group members for the entire conference. And I was a little sad that the teens weren't interacting each with each other, um, knowing that they'd be going back home and maybe seeing each other at the mall or at diocesan events and things around towns. So I wanted to make sure that our delegation had opportunities to build community, and that included with our adults, um, having them share responsibilities and maybe lighten the load a little. So here we begin by um, ongoing communication, of course, with group leaders not only just sending them information that we get from NFCYM to prepare, but also engaging them in idea sharing, some decision making, and having ownership of it. We do have a mandatory chaperone meeting. Uh, we offer it a couple of times at a couple of different locations. And uh, people who can't make it do have to do like a makeup test so that I know they read through the information. So it's a lot more fun to come to the meeting is what we try to tell them. Because at that meeting, um, we go through the details, we share ideas on trading items, planning meals, fundraising, and all the practical elements. We go over the codes of conduct, conference details, or whatnot. But we also have returning chaperones, the veterans, as they call themselves, talk with the newbies to answer questions and share insights. And I think that helps the veterans uh, renew their enthusiasm. And it helps the newer folks realize that it's not just some diocesan person saying do this and this. They get to talk to other people who've had to do the paperwork or the different details. Um, a part of the preparation is we ask each of the chaperones to volunteer to help the entire delegation. So most people sign up for maybe one night at the hotel curfew duty or one morning helping with breakfast duty, which means the other days and nights people can go and sleep. And I think that helps for a healthier chaperone. So we encourage them to make sure they take care of themselves, that they eat, drink, water, sleep. <laughs> um, and probably the most important part is that it's easy to forget the rules if it's just what you read them in August when you register. So we repeat them at our diocesan gatherings, at our meetings, and whatnot. And that helps the adults remember what they need to do. But we also emphasize that after safety, what the chaperones are there for is to journey with the young people, to be there to pray with them, to observe, to listen, to support, and then also to experience the conference. So we do spend some time talking with them about the workshops that they can attend, the prayer experiences, the things in the thematic park that we'll talk about soon. So before I just keep rambling, let me throw it over to Kim to talk a little bit more about um, Okay, yeah, Kim, go ahead and take it away with uh, planning schedules for NCYC. This is kind of a fun thing to do, and it's actually what I'm doing this afternoon with the young people that are going from our parents and um, some of the kids that are going um, for the first time. So I think it's extremely important. It's like going into Target without a list. Most, most people understand that. It could be really dangerous to go to NCYC without a plan. <laughs> so um, what, what we do is we sit down and we look at each of the rounds and we choose what we would like to, what, what resonates with us, what, what kind of piques our interest. And I'll have the kids kind of talk about stuff that's going on and why this might be a particular um, workshop that they want to attend. So we really set a plan. Just there um, with this big list of things that they could do. They've actually talked and discussed at a time when they're not like kind of inundated with um, um, all this information coming at them. Um, that they've made those choices when we're kind of in a place where we can talk about it and we can really kind of process it. Um, for us, one of the things that I like to encourage is if kids are. Uh, familiar with speakers, when we plan um, who we're going to see at the National Catholic Youth Conference, we always pick one that we know is going to be good. So it's kind of guaranteed it's somebody national like Jackie or somebody national that, that we've heard before that we know is going to be really good. And then we intentionally go and look through the names of the speakers that we've never encountered before. Because I think it's really important. It's, it's really easy to go into that conference and say, okay, this one's good and this one's good and I've seen this person. 
but I think it's also really important for us to make sure that we're um, trying and attempting to maybe um, open the doors for a new speaker or someone else who's kind of new to the circuit. And so um, that's one of the things that we intentionally do. And I could tell a quick story about that. Two years ago when we were at National at, at NCYC, we chose an unknown to us. And we went to that particular workshop and we sat down in this room. And as it turned out, we had gone to a session that was predominantly um, set up for those with hearing impairment. So in that particular session, we were, the, we were the only ones that could hear, and the rest of the people that came to the session could not hear. And so we um, were watching the signer and, and listening to the interpreter in a way that we hadn't anticipated at all. I have to say, for that particular year, in our particular group, that became a real um, turning point for us because we entered into the whole experience in a different way and we didn't really see that coming. The rest of the conference we sat in the hearing impaired section and we watched the signing and we we were in awe of the rhythm of the sign language and the way that it, sound, it looked when people were signing the music and it became a whole different venue for us to enter into our experience and it, it's something that we, we still kind of connect with and talk about. So I think that idea of you know, definitely choosing some speakers that you know is really important because you want to have those experiences where you say, yeah, that was really joy-filled or that was really um, inspiring and ignited something in me. But I think it's really important, too, to, to pick a few that you're unfamiliar with and kind of enter in and let grace and the Holy Spirit take, take charge of some of that. But planning is so important because there's been more than a few conferences where, where we've attended and saw young people kind of hanging out in the hallway when they could be encountering a workshop or a presenter. And it, and it really is because they didn't understand how beneficial it would be to plan before they got there. And so then they're there and they're overwhelmed with what's going on and they can't make a choice and then they choose to sit. And so that's a, that's a problem. So we really want to make sure we plan with them before we go. Thanks, Kim. Can I just jump in here? Yeah. This is Cindy. Thanks. Um, it's funny, Kim, that we just had our diocesan send-off this past Sunday, and part of what we have covered with the chaperones before and the group leaders is the importance of planning the workshops and picking. So I actually incorporated into the diocesan pilgrim guide this time a little worksheet that's like first choice, second choice, third choice, which you probably won't need, but it's better to have, and just made a little chart um, and gave them the link and told them all to start looking at that so that they could plan ahead. So thank you. It's good to hear that at a parish level that some do that, and hopefully yeah. more of ours will too. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Just a, as another sidebar too, it's really important to have a, a designated meeting place um, mm -hmm. before you get to the commotion of the, um, of the event. It's really good to uh, pinpoint exactly where your group's going to meet at what particular time, um, just so that everybody knows in the beginning. Good. Great. So speaking of during, the, uh, the event, we're back to Cindy again. So Cindy, if you want to talk about, so in addition to, you know, after you're getting to those meeting time, meeting places and meeting times, how are you processing the experience with the kids and with, and with the chaperones? Okay. Well, like many dioceses, hopefully, do we prepare a little journal that kind of fits right in the, the name tag holders. Um, and with that, it has questions that we invite the teens at different times to pull out and write or draw their responses to, but it's also questions then that the chaperones can pull straight out for discussion. And we bus back and forth to the convention center, so we have 15 or 20 minutes every morning and night that we can specifically spend time talking about what their observations were from the keynotes, from the workshops, from what they did in the thematic parks, um, what they saw if they were walking the city a little bit when they went to go look for meals. Um, but the other questions that we send off for the adults to share with the teens is really just ask them, what did you hear today? What did you see today? What did you do? How did you feel? And kind of help the teens get into uh, that reflective mode. And if we do that throughout the conference, then they get better at it. So that by the time we get to Saturday night, um, after the closing mass, we go back to our hotel, and during a pizza party, we ask them all to fill out a postcard that I then send to them a month later. But basically, the postcard just asks them to write something um, that they want to remember about the experience, something that they really liked about NCYC or something that they learned, 
And then that also is another opportunity for them to talk at tables and amongst themselves and compare notes. And it's really fun then to see their excitement that some Um, I have them do a brief written evaluation, and uh, it's not too long, but uh, it just helps them kind of reflect back on different aspects of the day, or of the, I'm sorry, of each day, and then they have those discussions on the bus. So we really just try to integrate throughout the entire conference experience, taking that, those moments to pause to really reflect on what they've seen, done, heard, or felt. Thanks, Cindy. And I think I've disappeared. Yeah, the, Sorry it, about that. the connection sure slowed down a little bit. That's no, okay. You can come back uh, as Bob is talking. Bob, if you want to go on and go ahead and talk, to, you've heard about the thematic part a little bit from some of the uh, the folks already. Can you tell us in more detail what that is? Yeah, I'm in favor of it. Yeah, you, you know, you, you know, in youth ministry, we use that phrase a lot that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, I believe that the thematic park is the Catholic village. And this, this really struck me, I guess it was the last NCYC, I'm walking through the thematic park and I'm thinking, this is it, this, this is the Catholic village, it's all here. And, and so I started to think that the village, you know, the thematic park is not just a place you go, uh, when you're there, being in that, in that park, that alone is a, uh, it's an evangelizing and catechizing experience. Because when our young people go to the thematic park, they are immersed, I think, in the entire spectrum of Catholic life. Um, you find Catholic universities are there, religious institutes are there, resource developers, social justice agencies, um, uh, a prayer and worship, music, performing ministries, and t-shirts. I mean, it's, it's all there. I mean, it's all in the park. So just having our young people walk through is a way to immerse people. Oh yeah, and it's fun besides. But they, they are immersed in Catholic culture in a way that I don't think can happen anywhere else in any of our programming. And so when I, when I think about the park and I think about one of those important aspects of the park, um, we have 215 exhibitors this year. And they include that whole spectrum of Catholicism from the universities and religious communities and organizations who, whose mission touches the lives of Catholic teenagers. We have 37 bishops who will be coming to NCYC this year. It's more than we had two years ago. And those bishops will be wandering through the park, especially those who maybe are lost. So but they'll be wandering through the park. Um, there's, a, there's a spot in the park, I think it's called the Bishop's Cove, which I think is kind of a funny phrase. But anyway, the, the Bishop's Cove. And so, um, so they're going to be in the cove signing camp postcards. And so what a, what a great way for our young people to interact with their bishops, so to go, go, go find the bishop. Um, the vocation section at the park this year is titled Storytelling, that we're going to use storytelling as the way to talk about vocations. So storytelling, that section of the park, will have 18 different speakers who are going to be sharing their vocation story throughout the three days of NCYC. And they represent the ordained priesthood, religious life, single life, married life, and executive directors of NFCYM, because I think this is a calling. So, <laughs> so it's, I'm just checking to see if you're still with me here. So, uh, and then and one of my favorite sections of the park, and one of the most interactive, is the service section. We're going to build on what we did two years ago. We're going to partner with Catholic Relief Services, and the organization called Stop Hunger Now, and we're going to do the Helping Hands Project. So our young people have a chance, and we're aiming for a minimum of 50,000 meals that we will bag right there on site at, NC, uh, at NCYC. And each bag, each meal feeds a family of four, and then these bags will all be sent to uh, these bags will all be sent to um, to Western Africa. I, it's just a powerful opportunity. Um, we will have opportunities in that section of the park to explore justice issues of homelessness, um, hunger food distribution, access to clean water, poverty in the third world. We're going to have a section on hospice care, that's new to us, and respect of end of life. It's, 
it is just a fascinating opportunity for our young people to immerse in, in kind of the service part of the, of the park. Um, we're going to be emphasizing, in addition to the service, that the other front of social justice. We're going to be looking at the justice issues. We're going to be partnering with the Catholic Mobilization Network. They're bringing a replica of a solitary confinement cell that's used in U.S. prisons. I, and, and it's built, it's built to the exact same specs. It'll just give our young people a sense of what that experience is like in our prison system. Uh, we are working with Catholic Climate Covenant. We're going to be exploring the effects of global warming and catastrophic uh, weather shifts. Uh, St. Vincent de Paul Society is going to be with us ag again this year. We're going to be looking at the impact of homelessness. And, and they're going to be showing young people how they could start their own chapter of St. Vincent de Paul in their local communities. And so I, I think that's really a, a major takeaway from the conference, that, that what happens in this park doesn't stay there. It will go back to their parishes, back to their schools, back to their dioceses. We even have St. Vincent um, Health System is coming, and they're going to present this whole this whole uh, presentation around uh, Don't Text and Drive. They, they have a Don't Text and Drive campaign. So they have simulators that young people will be able to sit in. and it, It's just a fascinating opportunity. Uh, but one of the ones that I think is really uh, maybe my favorite, and I think for a lot of our young people, because the, the park is called Camp Tekawitha, we're using that camp theme, the coffee house is called the Kumbaya Cafe. I think we did that probably just for the adults. I'm not yeah, sure that all the young I don't know if they really get that. <laughs> but, but but I think our I think our adults are just gonna love that. And I can see us all holding arms and swaying back and forth. <clears throat> but the Kumbaya Cafe is gonna have eighteen different artists who will be sharing their creative gifts as part of that coffee house. And then over on the one side of the park there's going to be the Kateri Prayer Corner offering a, a variety of prayer styles and prayer experiences. And so, so I would encourage our, our youth ministry leaders, the delegation leaders, and the um, and the chaperones to take advantage of the park as the Catholic village. One of the ways to do that will be to uh, to utilize the scavenger hunt. There's going to be a scavenger hunt that goes through the park, and I think it's going to be a very creative way for young people to kind of see the park in in its entirety to look with new eyes to find all the different things that are being identified as part of the scavenger hunt. I, I have a suspicion their bishop may be on that list, so they can go find their bishop. But you know, good youth ministers already know that the key to helping young people process an experience is, the, is our ability to ask good questions. And so, and you, and you heard that talked a little bit about before when you talked about preparing our young people. You heard Cindy talk about processing. I would, I would suggest that for our chaperones and for our delegation leaders to do things like to ask our kids in the park, what surprised you? What, what in this whole experience surprised you? What, what here in this thematic park uh, caught you off guard, caught your imagination, caught your attention? And then I think a really good question, what did you learn about being Catholic? As you walk through the park, what do you learn about being Catholic? And I, I think it's an important skill to help our young people begin to connect their experience with their, their Catholic identity. And so, uh, so I, would, I would encourage that. And then one of the implications then is for the chaperones themselves and youth ministry leaders, I think it's really important for us to be able to identify what's our favorite part of that thematic park and why is that so important to us. Mm -hmm. And so, so from here at the Federation, we're bringing a, del a delegation of 10 from the Archdiocese of NFCYM. Uh, but we're looking forward to being in the park and, and running into all of you there. Good. Thanks, Bob. I'm looking forward to sneaking out of the, ex the uh, Ave Maria Press exhibit booth and checking out all that exciting stuff. That's really, you know, that's really incredible. Um, so thank you for that. You're welcome. And moving on to Kevin. Kevin, keeping the parents involved during NCYC. Yeah, I'm going I'm to go with uh, two different directions on this response. One is, uh, again, the parents back home, and two is the parents and other adults who are on our trip with us. I think that the most obvious thing about connecting with parents today is, is using uh, social media. I think that's going to be an easy thing. Uh, we've set up a diocesan hashtag that we're trying to, trying to encourage everybody to use. We have a diocesan Twitter account that's just set up for, for this trip so that parents can follow that, whether they're connecting with Facebook or MySpace or uh, Twitter or Instagram or whatever it is that people are using, um, try to find some way to connect with them via social media outlets. 
Um, the other obvious way is uh, live streaming and to make sure that parents are aware uh, that they can connect with us uh, that way as well and see their children. I don't, I don't go to the general sessions when I'm, when I'm in Indianapolis. I'm using the hotel room managing our operations. And I get to watch the live streaming session. That's how I take part. And it's so cool to watch the uh, parents see their kids or what their kids are seeing and, and type in chats on the, on the live streaming um, that allows for them to, to say with each other what they're experiencing with NCYC. That's just kind of cool that uh, this experience goes internationally uh, with those live, uh, live streaming sessions. So for our parents to be part of that is cool. Uh, and when it comes to uh, the parents who are actually on site and other chaperones, uh, we've made a deliberate effort. And I've, I'm trying to think of who, who talked about it. Cindy, I think you were talking about how you uh, give them time when they're on and time when they're off so they can get their own rest. Um, we've actually, we have the luxury of bringing a team of people just to support our, our chaperones. So yeah. we have an advanced team that's there to do all logistics work and we walk the halls at night so our chaperones and our parents can sleep because wow. a sleepy chaperone is a cranky chaperone and we want them to be joyful disciples of Jesus. So um, that's something we try to do and we try as much as we can to get them their own beds in their own hotel rooms so that they can sleep as well as possible. Uh, kids might be able to do this four or five hours of sleep thing for four consecutive nights but I'm, I'm not willing. Uh, so, uh, so our adults give them as much rest as we can. Um, I also really encourage the adult-only sections at NCYC that there's the, the parent facilities for that. So to get away and to go do some uh, adult formation uh, for yourself while you're at NCYC. I uh, tell all the adults in our, our chaperone training meetings that um, NCYC is an okay time to be selfish about growing your own faith. It's really important that our young people have strong, faith-filled adults when they get home. Uh, so that's, that's how we're going to survive this. Uh, my, one of my favorite NCYC stories at Memories is when I was at the hotel after the, the closing mass, it's like six years ago, and I had an adult who was a dad who was forced to be there, right, because the wife said, you're going, and he said, okay. And so this 50-year-old uh, guy, maybe late 40s, I'm bad at guessing, uh, guessing ages, just like a, a grumpier guy going in, comes back Saturday night and comes up to me and says, I got to tell you, other than the birth of my kids, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, and so I think we need to remember that this is an opportunity to engage adults as much as it is an opportunity to engage teens. Uh, we don't engage adults only because they're the parents of our teenagers, but because they need Jesus in their lives just as much as our young people do. Um, that's kind of reshaped how I view uh, this national conference. Um, to me, this is adult formation as much as it is youth formation. Um, and I try to I try to bring that emphasis into to our group leaders as well. We're building a structure for success when these teens get back and we require adults who are on fire with their faith to make that happen. So that's one of the ways we're, some of the ways we're very deliberate about trying to keep um, parents engaged while we're there. Cool. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Kevin, you mentioned a couple times the live streaming or, or Kevin or, or Bob or anyone, where, where is the the actual link where the parents, where the parishes would go for the live streaming? Yeah, they, they can go right up to the main page at ncyc.org. Okay. You know, they go to NC, the NCYC major, the front page, We'll have uh, how you hook up for the uh, live streaming. Great, that's a great, that's a really great feature for this event. Thank you. Hey, Jackie, thank you for for your patience. Number eight, prayer time amid the chaos. It's been wonderful. I've I've been learning a lot. <laughs> um, anyone who's been to NCYC kind of knows how um, how chaotic it is, and even for me as an extrovert, I. It's completely draining, and I, I need some alone time. Um, even you know, even though I love meeting people and everything. So I remember last NCYC, um, it was so wonderful to be able to kind of step away, to go in the chapel, have some prayer time, have some quiet time, um, just by myself and just me and God, and it was it was wonderful. So I I would say um, a couple things uh, would be to encourage teens and even chaperones to bring maybe even a, a journal just to kind of write things down during the main sessions, during the breakout sessions, um, just like either scripture verses they heard or, or points that they thought were good. Because, you know, I know when I've gone to conferences and I hear a bunch of different talks, I don't a lot of times remember, I remember, oh, that was a great talk. I have no idea what they just said. You know, and I, you might remember some stories, but um, I think writing it down in a journal is always a good good way to help us to remember maybe some of the points that the speakers said um, or something that really hit us or, you know, again, scripture verses. So that way, um, when we do want to have some downtime, uh, we can go to the chapel and maybe just sit with some of those things we wrote down, um, even those scripture verses, and be like, wow, this is, 
I really want to reflect on what the speaker said because um, it, it really hit me. And and so I think it's it's good for the teens and the chaperones. And I'm glad you know Cindy and Kevin, you guys talked about um, the chaperones needing some time, which we all, <laughs> I, yeah, I definitely under this, understand the sleep thing. And I think it's it's good too to give the, the chaperones some some downtime and say, you know, go go to the chapel, have some quiet time. Um, just sit and, and sometimes in the chapel there are speakers or they're praying the rosary or there's music which is which is beautiful so I, I think it's really um, nice to have that also confession you know urging the teens to go to confession and that's always that's always cool it's cool to see the line as well seeing like wow all these teens um, want to go and for, to get their sins forgiven so to, just encouraging the teens and the chaperones um, to go to confession during NCYC so that's, I mean, for, for me, I know that that helped me a lot in my last NCYC experience, just having some time of, of quietness amidst, you know, the craziness of all the people, and there's so much to do. The thematic park is amazing, and um, we can constantly be doing, but it's good some time to spend just being and kind of reflecting on the things that we've learned, uh, the things that maybe hit us or made us uncomfortable. And, and just to take that time with God so that we can really kind of digest um, all the stuff that God is doing in our hearts. Thanks, Jackie. So after the event, after NCYC, Kevin, talk to us a little bit about after parties and the follow-up that you do. Yeah, I think I've, I've, if my group leaders in the Archdiocese have heard anything from me, they've heard me say over the past year, NCYC is easy. November 23rd is when the work begins. Um, that this is this is an introduction for a lot of folks. This is one of the most powerful first encounters they're going to have with a mega church, like just this, this huge image of universal church, and and God's going to hit people in certain ways. Uh, so now what? I mean, that's that's the ultimate question. How are you prepared to respond when these young people get home? Um, so I've, there's a lot of things that that have happened uh, that I've heard of that are just are really neat. Uh, a lot of our our teens, um, in, as a response to fundraising efforts, will uh, be given uh, time at masses following NCYC the week or two after to share with their benefactors, with their contributors, what they've gotten from the experience. So uh, that's kind of neat to bring to the parish. Um, that that kind of liveliness can happen. Uh, and the more that we let teens with energy um, share with the adults of a faith community um, what lively Catholic faith can look like, I think the more adults gravitate to that. Uh, we have one of our stories, one of our parishes, uh, last year um, heard about NCYC in July, brought uh, 10 teens and five adults to NCYC. 2013, they came back and revitalized their parish, uh, brought a lot more energy into it. This year they're bringing 65 people uh, from their parish uh, to NCYC. And uh, some of those teens are going to be sharing that story at one of the discernment sessions on Saturday afternoon at NCYC about how can teens really take this NCYC experience and bring it back. So I think sharing with your parish what your experiences are, that's, that's just a critical good way uh, for folks to do that. Um, another thing, like I said, I've, I've really invested a lot in forming an adult community around NCYC. So so we do a deliberate effort in January, two months after NCYC, we have a free chaperone appreciation dinner. And it's something we can do because of our size, there's an economy of a scale that, that we can do this. But I'd hope any, any parish or any diocese could get somebody to underwrite a piece of this, but uh, we provide a free dinner, it's a free meal. Uh, we have adult beverages, I'm just saying. Um, we bring in an inspirational speaker, um, somebody who's uh, going to help them, somebody from NCYC that they connect to, and we really try to rebuild or, or reemphasize the faith of our adult communities um, as they come back from that. So helping our chaperones to view themselves as ongoing mentors, not just people who served a three-day experience, but can walk with teens uh, for the rest of their journey. Bob, you had something to add, I, right? Uh, yeah, I wanted to add on something that Kevin said. Uh, in my parish, I'm a volunteer at St. Francis of Assisi Parish, and uh, in Fulton, Maryland, part of the Archdiocese of Baltimore. And about two weeks after NCYC, we will, at all of our Sunday liturgies, we will have two of our young people after communion share their experience of NCYC, especially through the lens of the impact of NCYC on their faith. And I have to tell you, when it, when it comes to trying to get the, the best bang for your ministry buck, um, whenever you get young people, give them the opportunity to address the faith community about their own faith experiences, that their experiences of Jesus. I have to tell you, sitting in that congregation, watching those parents, and I, get, I have the distinct impression that all those parents are sitting there and they're all going, I want my kid to have that kind of experience, and I want my kid to be able to stand up and talk about that experience 
in front of this this church. And so, I, Kevin, I just want to affirm that whole idea that we need to find ways for young people to to be able to reflect back to the community. Here's the experience I had. Here's how it strengthened my faith. Um, and here's where I encountered Jesus. Yeah, and just and uh, to to tag team just a little bit even further. Here's here's one of the fun challenges um, that I've heard from enough people when they get back. The follow up that's really critical is when people say, "Our kids have this amazing mass on Saturday night. How how do we plug them in to the to the normal mass that they're used to on on every weekend?" So um, that's a real good question for us to be preparing ourselves. How are we going to do that? How are we going to have our parish liturgies? Um, respond to that increased need when our adults and teens come back. Um, it's, it was one of the things we say is that the Mass they go to at NCYC is the same Mass they go to at home. It's the same Jesus, it's the same sacrament, and help them to kind of transcend the NCYC experience into be, bringing life into their parish on the Sunday Assembly. So that's kind of a, a, neat, a neat challenge. I think it's, uh, it's um, something that we're going to have to keep continuing with because it's, it's hard. We have, we have uh, kids who come back from NCYC and, and wish their parish's liturgies can be at the same high uh, quality and, and teen centered um, focus for them. Um, so how do we help our kids grow beyond that? I guess that's that's a real tough uh, thing that that's why we need continued youth ministry and young adult ministry to keep walking with people after this experience. Great, great. Thanks, Kevin. And finally, 10 parent follow-up. And, and after that, well, we have a number of questions that have come in. We're looking forward to answering some of them. But Kim, wrap it up with some follow-up with the parents. Okay. Um we do, and uh, we drive to Indianapolis when it's been at Indianapolis. So one of the things we do on the bus as we approach the parish, when we're really getting to the point where we're getting close to home, is we actually kind of let the kids know and prep them for their parents and and for them to be kind. <laughs> and I know that may seem absurd, <laughs> but I think um, it's really good for the. the the young people to understand their parents have kind of been waiting for them to return from this experience and they're full of questions to ask and things that they want to talk about um, and that we we really do walk through um, give your folks 20 minutes when you get home tell them what you saw um, and then if you can't handle any more conversations say you know I, I want to tell you more about it but can we talk about it again later so that they have kind of the words to to work in the conversation with their parents and then we prep the parents with the questions, along with um, Bob's, what surprised you? Because I really like that question. I think that that's not real threatening to young people. So if they encounter parents, they're like, well, did you like it? Did you have a good time? Well, those aren't really very deep questions. They're not going to get much of an answer out of those. But what surprised you? Or where did you see God? Or what challenged you? I think those are the kinds of questions we, you know, casually as parents can kind of work into the conversation. I'd also use the number system. You know, from one to eight, what did you what what did you feel about Thursday? What did you feel about Friday? That way, it kind of opens the door to conversation instead of bombarding them with the um, well, how was it? You know, who did you hear? Um, and I think that there was one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, I think it's really important for us as either preparers or um, as the adults to ask the kids how they're going to respond to what they've seen, witnessed, what challenged them. I think we take them to these experiences sometimes and we don't let them know that that's part of our hope, that, that it's going to ignite and, and encourage a response out of them. And, you know, our love um, from God is unconditional, of course, but there's a desire that we'll, we'll continue to grow the faith. And I think it's good for us to ask them how they, they see themselves responding to this experience because it's not just that particular experience. It's about what happens after it. Wrapped up. Good. <laughs> Good. Thanks. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, everybody, for for your thoughts and your insights. And, and as I said, there's lots of questions that are coming in. So what we'll do now is, if you have some questions for any of our panelists, or just uh, questions in general about NCYC, now's the time to ask those. And and I'll try to um, bounce them back and forth to some of the people on our panel to to a answer. Um, Bob, as I'm looking through some of these questions, can you? talk a little bit about what you did share before we started, which which was a little bit of the history of NCYC and, again, the numbers that we've got at this point. Just really curious where we're at with everything. Yeah, I'd be happy to kind of give a context for all this. Um, you know, the, the National Federation for Catholic Youth Ministry has been hosting, producing NCYC since 1983, but we're actually are building on the tradition of the church. The church has been gathering young people every two years since 1951. So for 64 years, 
uh, the Young Church has gathered nationally every every two years. And and previous to the National Federation, it was the National CYO Federation. So that may be a term that some of you are familiar with, the CYO model of youth ministry. But when the Federation was created in 82, then NCYC became part of our offering. So we grew out of the old National CYO. And so for 64 years, um, this will be number 30. Three, I think just the 33rd NCYC uh, this year. And then we have over 21,000 paid uh, registrations right now. We have a thousand, um, at least a thousand volunteers. We have another thousand exhibitors, speakers, performers. So we figure by the time everybody's in one place at one time in Indianapolis, we'll be somewhere well over 23, probably closer to 24,000 people uh, will, will be there at NCYC. Wow, thank you, Bob. Sure. Uh, so we, we have a bunch of questions coming in, uh, a, bunch, a few about the thematic park, and I, I want to come back to those in a minute. Um, but earlier on in the presentation, I think it was either Kim or Cindy were, were, were talking about trading. Um, can you talk, Kim. Kim? Kim, can you talk more about what you meant by trading? We have a couple questions about that. What, what, what that meant? And what are the guidelines? Trading kids, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Archdiocese or parishes will bring items to use, and it really is a conversation starter and something to share where you're coming from. Um, so uh, Chicago Region 7 uh, is the cow, uh, the theme of the, the cow, the spots on the cow often. So some of the things that um, Chicago will bring will be <laughs> very nice, Bob, or that's Kevin, <laughs> will bring items that um, kind of have that theme about it. Um, People bring clothespins with their parish on it, just, you know, with little words of encouragement for the participants that they get clipped on their clothes without anybody knowing. Um, beads are big. Uh, it's a way to introduce yourself and share a little bit about where you're from with the other participants. And in addition to it being a great icebreaker, I found that a lot of our participants love when they get home, they can then reflect on where they've met people from all around the country. And they get very excited if they're like, I met someone from Honolulu, I met someone from Wichita. So it, it just helps kind of remind them of some of those experiences of the people they met. So they're kind of like souvenirs as well. Thanks, thank you. Uh, um, we, a couple questions about, so I remember being in the World Meeting of Families this year, I don't know if any of you were there, but that the CRS um, being in the exhibit hall was just an incredible experience, and we have a lot of people asking questions about uh, th this version of that NCYC. Is there a Bob? Is there a sign up for for the for serving, or do you just kind of show up at, at certain mm -hmm. times? Yeah, the way it's going to work, you can actually just show up during the, when the park is open. There'll be a continuous line of people who are there bagging those meals, and so I would encourage people to bring their delegations over because one of the things we found two years ago is that an awful lot of our bishops are also there bagging meals. And so there's something really powerful about our young people having the opportunity to be standing with their bishop uh, uh, bagging these meals for the, uh, for the, for the hungry of, of West Africa. So, yep, I would highly encourage that. Good. Um... Just a couple of some people are offering some of their own uh, best practices suggestions. Beth, seeing I, I, I suggesting that I do from Beth, she says I send out a group text to parents while we are at NCYC, reminding them that we are praying for them too. I also send out a text on the way home to the parents to remind them that their kids are tired but so full of amazing memories. So that's good use of the text messaging. Um, Michelle asks another suggestion for teens when trading is to make a sheet with all the states and leave blanks for names and emails. That's a good idea. Um, so Maureen asked about the scavenger hunt. Will the scavenger hunt be available? Um, I lost that, but will the scavenger hunt be available on the website, Bob? Or is no, I don't think so. I think you picked that up in the park itself. Okay, good. Amanda asked, where's the best place to get a strong cup of coffee at NCYC? <laughs> Every corner. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great question. <laughs> oh, um, Good. Can I ask a related question, Bob? Uh, for Bob, is there going to be a parents' lounge this time? In I the past, there has been an opportunity for. Yeah, Cindy. Yeah, I think, I think I think there's a parent lounge and there's a um, there's a parent resource center that's tied into the parent track of workshops that we're doing as well. That's really a good point. Why don't, why don't I say something about that for a moment? And for for any of you who are coming to NCYC for the first time. There's an entire track of workshops 
uh, first for the adult leadership. So Kevin talked about her own professional development. But uh, there's also a, a track of workshops for parents. And so and I find that particularly valuable. And there's a parent resource center uh, for parents. So uh, I think, all right, so this is my bias. I think that NCYC uh, is really no longer a youth event. I think of NCYC as a church event that focuses on young people. And, that, and that, so I think what that says to me is that NCYC um, has become bigger than just a youth conference. It's a church conference. It's a church gathering for young people. Yeah, thanks. About, and I think that's so true about religious education and youth ministry today. That That's the biggest opportunity that we have as, an, as evangelization is to reach out to the parents of the kids that we're focusing on. Thank you. Um, I want to – we have a question for Kevin about um, – how we got so many people. I want to come back to that. But but Jackie, can I ask you a question as a presenter, as a person who speaks at these conferences? You know, wh what's what's the best way that youth ministries, or parishes, kids can connect with you outside of the event, follow up, or, or whatever else that would be beneficial? I mean, um, what would you suggest for you know capitalizing on what your your talks are are, are all about? Um, I know with me and I know with a lot of speakers, um, a lot of us have websites that we write blogs on and we all have Twitter and Instagram and for me, I love I love when teens um, keep in contact That cause, because I used to be a youth minister. I feel like now my youth ministry is national and I get to keep in contact with some of these teens. So definitely through through blogs, but I, I love when, like, I've had some teens be like, you know, two years ago we met and, and we're going to see each other again and I remember these teens by name because they either on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, they keep in contact so much. It's I, I know that like when I then go to their diocese, I like can I know their face and their name because they've stayed in contact. So um, so for us um, as speakers, like it's it's great when teens really, you know, they go on their Facebook, their Twitter, their Instagram and um, they they follow us because then, then also they have kind of a voice in their lives that's kind of always giving a positive um, Catholic voice, um, whether we post scripture verses or whatever we post. But also through the blogs, you know, uh, my husband and I always were like, these blogs are for you guys. These blogs about relationships and dating and marriage and, you know, um, they're four teens. So when they leave these places, they're... They're, they have this encouragement, like, listen, this Catholic life isn't always easy, but it's possible, and we're all in this together, you know. Um, so social media is a great way to stay in contact. Um, and I know some speakers, some, you know, some not, when it comes to emails, you know, some teens have questions um, that, that speakers will reply to. But I, de I definitely think social media is, like, the easiest, the easiest way, for, for sure. And um, we love getting to know these teens outside of outside of NCYC um, and getting to see them again when we go to their dioceses. It's great advice because I'm, I'm sure so many of them, like you said, it, they're really in this digital culture in which they might be devoid of this kind of NCYC experience and to have some uh, some of the speakers in that stream and be able to interact with them, just liking some of the things that you're posting, it's a great idea to follow everybody that they come across while they're there. That's great. Um, um, Mike is asking us what, what you and Paul Kim have in store for us as MCs this year. <laughs> well, what's good, the benefit is that Paul and I have been friends for like the last seven years and our our hus like like our families are friends. And um, I don't know, it's just gonna be we're we're but we're both goofballs. So we've got some <laughs> fun things planned and we're just gonna be ourselves and we're both crazy and musical and we like to have fun, so uh, we're excited to invite everybody into that that music and that that being just that Catholic like being Catholic is is fun and it's joyful and um, yeah we're really excited to to MC. Good, I love it. Joy of the gospel, I love it. Uh, Kevin, you, some people ask questions. You know, sixteen. What did you say it was? Sixteen hundred to. I make up the rest. <laughs> yeah, it's over sixteen hundred. So. So how did you do that? <laughs> well, I, that's a good question. I mean, I wish I knew. Uh, the short answer is I didn't do it. I think one of the things that we see is that uh, our kids come back from NCYC and they go up to their buddies and say, dude, you got to do this thing. Uh, so there's some kind of a connection with the kids from, from Iowa that they go to NCYC and they experience a church that totally gives them new life, a new direction, and, and uh, they come and invite their friends. Uh, we, we do everything we can at this level to make it easy for parishes to bring kids. But we don't really promote. We don't really recruit. We don't beg people to go. 
course, Indianapolis picked a bit of a fight with us this year, and they said they were going to get more than we did, and our people caught wind of that and said, no, no, you're not. And so anyway, there's a bit of a, a fun little competition with the Archdiocese of Indianapolis, but um, it's just I think our people are being fed, and when people are fed by a program, they tend to bring their friends, and that's it's created a lot more work on my desk, uh, but uh, it's something we're grateful for. Um, and it's kind of a, a neat thing. And we've got great faith leaders in our diocese who are willing to step up to the call, too, and do that. A lot of our groups are going without paid personnel staff. I mean, they're just there's volunteers who've heard about NCYC, um, and now, now they're going because they want to support something for their young people in their parishes. Our biggest growth, by the way, is in our rural parishes, um, the ones that don't have full-time faith formation leaders. That's our biggest growth, uh, not in our urban centers. If Iowa had urban centers, I don't, I don't know. So Bob, Bob had a question for you, Kevin. He said, can you talk more about the impact of NCYC on your parish youth ministries afterwards? So, uh, so, so we've been really focusing on that. This, this, uh, this growth at NCYC has, has, has been happening for, for the past five, five, seven years. So we've been really focusing this year on making NCYC an opportunity for us to grow all parish ministry, not just this attending to NCYC. Um, so we have a network. We have a communication. Our, our parish leadership who does this is starting. Uh, we're seeing some parishes get more energy and actually throwing some resources towards a position for youth ministry. Um, it's, it's not ending. Um, also, this is kind of important. In some parishes, there's this clash of uh, a, a religious education person, a, a DRE or a CRE, and the youth minister person. This program has been uniting. In those parishes that don't have a youth ministry person, the DRE takes that on and starts to view themselves as just as much involved in youth ministry as they are in formal instruction of the faith. And so that's that's allowed for kind of an expansion of, of position mentality, I think, and it's, it's helped our parishes see faith formation, like Bob was saying, not just a youth-centric piece, but as a church experience um, and something that's, that's lifelong, not just targeted to a specific audience. So I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I'm just I'm just kind of sitting here trying to trying to figure out hotel rooming lists. That's that's what, and make sure everybody's on a bus. Like that's that's what I'm trying to figure out. So, uh, but it's it's really neat to watch and to be a spectator of so much so much good stuff happening around me. Well, some of Bob's colleagues from NFCYM are jumping in the, in the comments to make sure that everyone's aware of. Um, we talked about the website already. Um, Mike, Mike Mike talks about the planning. Mike, Michael's saying planning help. Check out the Pilgrim prep guide on ncycprogram.org um, or, or ncyc.org um, and download the NCYC app. It's awesome. And also to follow so, NFCYM and NCYC on social media. So using the hashtag looks like NCYC. I've seen the hashtag NCYC 2015 out there as well. So I'm sure both of those would work on, on Twitter, Instagram, etc. So uh, make sure you follow along there in addition to the live streaming, everybody. Um, well, any any uh, last words? I'm going to go through everybody mm -hmm. once real quickly just to give a, kind of a one last, um, you know, parting words on how to have a great experience with NCYC. Um, so I'll, I'll try to go in, in the uh, uh, starting with, let's see, from the bottom to the top. Cindy, go ahead. What, what's some parting words of advice you could give everybody? I think... One of the things we laugh about when we talk about the dance is that chaperones will help make sure the teens are leaving room for the Holy Spirit. But I think generalizing that to the entire thing, making sure that even if you're worried about meeting times and bus times and packing your backpacks and getting food, that really to stay open and leave room for the Holy Spirit throughout the whole process. Okay, thanks. Back to you, Kevin. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to just tag team along with that too. I, I think that I've, I've told group leaders, try to plan time to do nothing. Um, because what Jackie was saying about the chaos of this, and if somebody wants to make a billion bucks, it would be an introvert's guide to surviving NCYC. Uh, how do we how do we deal with teens who are screaming and yelling and, and me? Like so, um, that's just find a place to get away, set time to not be stimulated, so you can process the stimulation that you've already had. Bob, yeah, I, I th as big as NCYC is, I, I want to hone in on the uh, on the the human face. Um, Last month, I had the occasion to do youth ministry training in the town of Galena, Alaska. It's the, it's the Diocese of Fairbanks. Galena has no paved roads. They have no road that connects to another village. They have mass once every six to eight weeks. And Galena is sending three teenagers and an adult to NCYC. It will take them at least four flights to get to Indianapolis. And these kids have never, ever seen this many people. 
And in fact, as they go from one airport to the next to the next, their world will get bigger and bigger. I just want to remind us, in the midst of all this, it's about those individual kids who are uh, about to encounter the faith community in a way that they've never done before. And, and our prayer is that at the same time, they're encountering Jesus who is alive in those faith communities. This is real. Those stories are very real in the midst of all this planning. Let's remember that. Wow. Thanks, Bob. Jackie, parting words? Um, I would say just to be, you know, witnesses witnesses of joy because we're all going to get tired and cranky and, <laughs> um, and I, th you know, yeah, Bob's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> but, I, you know, I think to be, to be witnesses of joy that our chaperones um, – are joyful even when you know things can get frustrating or lines can be long and for the teens you know just to remind them to to always have this to have joy and that that you know it says the joy of the Lord is our strength and there's my baby in the background <laughs> yelling um, and, and yeah so I just think this is such a joyful you know four days um, and whether we're in the main session or we're waiting in line to have have joy thank you Kim um, just a reminder for everyone that it's not just an experience, but an experience of faith. And I think um, just to, to remember that, um, it, to be clear about your expectations so that the kids don't have the opportunity to make as many mistakes, because they do, that's who they are. But if we are good at articulating what we expect from them, they'll be better about meeting what we're, what we're hoping for. And then um, just to remember that it's about every encounter, um, something similar to what Bob was saying. It's about who, we're, who we are when we're there, and that goes with every young person that we're with and every person that we encounter and every, um, everything that we do. So to remember, each one of those little things add up as well. Good. Well, thanks, everybody, for all the panelists for being here, sharing your time, and everybody who's here in the audience. I really appreciate um, you all being here. I'm really excited about next week. I've never been to an NCYC, so I'm looking forward to the experience. I feel very much prepared, so this is somewhat of a selfish experience for me. Um, but I'm really looking forward to it, and I can't wait to, uh, to see all, all these people, these young kids that are on fire for the faith. So, uh, thanks, Jared. So a couple of people have asked already, will this webinar being rec be recorded? It is being recorded. The webinars are going to be sent to you later on this week, so look for that. I just want to thank real quickly once again the, the partners, the, the National uh, Conference of Catechetic Leadership, the National Association for Lay Ministry, the National Federation of Priest Councils for their partnership in this series, uh, but also the National Federation for Catholic Youth Ministry and the National Association for Catholic Youth Ministry Leaders for partnering on this webinar, especially in, in terms of um, getting ready for NCYC next week. So like I said, the, the webinar was being recorded. It'll be along with all the webinars that we've, we've recorded, all the webinars we've done over the last five years at AveMariaPress.com slash webinar hyphen videos. You can also find the recordings on YouTube and, and Vimeo. Um, real quickly before we go, I, I want to invite you to the next webinar in the series with Dr. Johns Bergsma, which is November 17th. 2015, and that's next Tuesday, and he's going to talk about how to get through the New Testament in an hour, and if, if you're a fan or a regular um, participant in the webinar series, you remember one of the most popular webinars we've done was with him, which was how to get through the Bible in an hour, and now he's just going to go through the New Testament, and that's based on his new book with the, the characteristic drawings that he uses as a professor at Steubenville, Franciscan University in Steubenville, um, with his new book, New Testament Basics for Catholics, so we're looking forward to bringing him back to the series. Um, um, once again, thanks everybody for for being with us, panelists especially. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you all in Indianapolis next week. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Bye. Thank you. God all bless right. you all. God bless. Bye-bye.